Hey guys, it's Owen from Wrestling Inc. back with another wrestling news roundup. Without any further ado, let's get into today's biggest stories in the world of professional wrestling. Backstage news on the WWE NXT meetings where female talents were reportedly asked to dress sexier. New details have been revealed on the WWE NXT Women's Division meetings that Warrior Wrestling Women's Champion Athena, formerly known as Ember Moon, called quite stupid in a recent interview. As noted previously, Athena spoke with Chris Van Vliet to discuss various topics in a new interview this week. At one point, she talked about how hurtful her NXT situation was and how she saw the downfall once WWE Executive Vice President of Global Talent Strategy and Development Triple H was gone following his cardiac event. This is where Athena described meetings where she says female talents were told how to dress like NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose. She said, quote, When you care about something, not just for yourself, but for everyone involved, it hurts so much more. For so many years, I've been not about my South. I've been for the match and other people. To be told I've done nothing wrong and I was taken off TV for doing nothing wrong, it hurt so bad because I was so happy walking into work. I remember when Shotzi left, I remember going to my makeup artist and saying, I'm so unhappy. We would have to sit through stupid meetings about how we'd have to dress sexy. I remember looking at someone else and laughing. I catered to children. I'm not about to wear fishnet booty butt cheek shorts because we had a two hour meeting about how to dress like Mandy Rose. That's not fair. Mandy is absolutely phenomenal and an amazing person, but not everyone is Mandy Rose. I started seeing this downslope as soon as Hunter was gone. For the first bit, we didn't know why. We just knew he wasn't there. I got so angry. I was sitting there thinking, I did nothing wrong. I didn't piss off Vince. They take Shotzi away. Hunter is gone. You guys promised me this wouldn't happen. You promised me I wouldn't be lost in the shuffle. I went on this losing streak to help you guys out and build other talents so I could get a reward. In an update, Fightful Select has revealed new details on the stupid meetings about how we'd have to dress sexy that Moon mentioned. These meetings were held back in October of last year. WWE brought in fashion expert Melanie Pace to conduct the meetings back in October 2021. Pace bills herself as an Orlando-based on-air style expert, a fashion stylist, and a virtual stylist. She also works out of other cities and serves as a wardrobe stylist and personal shopper. Pace took to Instagram and posted a few photos from WWE's Performance Center in Orlando on October 18 last year. The meetings were reportedly held under the guise of, quote, fashion consulting and, quote, fashion aid as a way to play up the fact that the women on the NXT brand were larger than life superstars. It was noted by one NXT wrestler how this was a stark contrast from before as people on the NXT roster were originally encouraged to wear either just their ring gear or an available merchandise shirt. Another talent noted how they were encouraged to dress similarly backstage and didn't outright say that, quote, dressing sexier was spoken aloud, but it was implied. Several members of the roster expressed displeasure with the meetings and blamed them on WWE talent relations head John Laurinaitis as they started taking place when he regained power. The meetings were seen as one of the big changes following Triple H's departure when he took time off for his health last fall. While talent put the blame on Laurinaitis, it has not been confirmed if he came up with the meetings. It looks like the meetings were not mandatory as numerous women reportedly refused to attend. Top rope breaks during WWE live main event. WWE kicked off their 2022 European tour with a live event from the Utila Arena in Newcastle, England yesterday. The main event featured Drew McIntyre defeating Bobby Lashley, but there was a minor setback in the match as the top rope broke at one point. As can be seen in various videos on social media, McIntyre ran the ropes during the match and the top rope broke, which led to Lashley immediately falling out to the floor as a trainer ran over to check him out. Sami Zayn, who had interfered in the match, was also at ringside and helped Lashley back into the ring. A fan in attendance noted that Lashley did not seem to be injured and he was able to return to the ring to finish the bout, which McIntyre won. McIntyre also hit a post-match claymore to Zayn, or while the top rope was broken. McIntyre tweeted a photo from the incident and wrote, quote, Thank you, WWE Newcastle. We tore the house and the ring down. Tony Khan says Forbidden Door will feature quote dream matches people thought they'd never see. 
AEW owner and president Tony Khan was a guest on the Superstar crossover with Josh Martinez prior to the Dynamites that aired on April 27. Tony explained that in regard to the upcoming Owen Hart tournament, the brackets could not yet be revealed until all of the wrestlers involved had qualified. The official tournament will begin on May 11. Quote, the bracket I'm not going to be able to reveal until everybody has qualified, or at least everybody that is going to be announced has qualified, Khan said. We'll have this great bracket when we come back to New York on May 11 at the UBS Arena on Long Island. We had a great crowd there last time, we're going to have a great crowd on Long Island again, and it's going to be a great time May 11th. I'm excited about kicking off the Owen Hart Cup tournament with some huge matches. Tony Khan was asked how long it took to put together the Forbidden Door pay-per-view, which will be co-hosted by New Japan Pro Wrestling on Sunday, June 26. Quote, it's something that we talked about for a long time, Tony explained. Now, with international travel opening up, it's possible. We've, I think, built a great relationship between AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling. The AEW head honcho also disclosed that he will work closely with New Japan Pro Wrestling's lead booker Gado to build the card with dream matches that fans thought they'd never see at Forbidden Door. Quote, I'm certainly going to work closely with Gado in putting this card together, Tony Khan said. The two of us will have to decide who can send from our respective companies what the matches are going to be and we'll make the best matches we can for the pro wrestling fans. There's going to be dream matches that people thought they'd never get to see. AEW Dynamite draws lowest viewership and key demo rating since February. Wednesday's live edition of AEW Dynamite drew 921,000 viewers on TBS, according to Nielsen via Showbuzz Daily. This is down 0.96% from last week's episode, which drew 930,000 viewers. This week's Dynamite drew a 0.33 rating in the key 18-49 demographic. This is down 10.81% from last week's 0.37 rating. Dynamite ranked number 4 on the cable top 150 this week with the 0.33 rating in the 18-49 key demographic. This is even with last week's number 4 ranking. Dynamite ranked number 37 in viewership for the night on cable this week. This is down from last week's number 35 ranking. Wednesday's Dynamite drew the lowest audience and lowest key demo rating since the February 16 episode. The episode drew the second lowest viewership and second lowest key demo rating of the year so far. Wednesday's Dynamite was down 0.96% from last week, while the key demo rating was down 10.81% from last week too. This week's Dynamite viewership was up 3.6% from the same week in 2021. The key demo rating was even with the previous year too. The 2021 episode had major competition from President Biden's address to Congress. So what are your thoughts on today's Wrestling News Roundup? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestling Inc. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon.